So in the last part, it was mostly 3D modeling of the perfume bottle using references. Uh, so this part today is totally different. We're gonna be just uh, scattering a lot of objects on the scene and we're gonna be focusing more on the environment. So let's get into it. So let's first delete the cube and add a plane. So for the scene, we will need 3D models. So I've already used the GeoScatter library and I picked out seven models, uh, three trees and two for grass and uh, around like three plants. We want to assign each of them to a collection group so that we can uh, scatter them each uh, separately according to their collection. So let's select the trees, add them in the trees collection. Let's do the same for the plants and the grass. Let's now subdivide the plane. Let's get some subdivisions on there. Let's increase to 20, even more, 50. Okay, that works. Let's now go to edit mode so we can change the shape of the plane. Let's select the vertices and enable proportional editing. We can change the size of the proportional editing by using the scroll wheel. Just keep changing each bit like this. Okay, now let's save the file and hop into the geometry nodes section. Just press new to create a new geometry nodes. Let's first add the node uh, distribute uh, points on faces, which basically just distributes a bunch of points on the plane. And we're gonna add an instance on points, which allows us to add like trees, any instance we want on the points. And let's add a join geometry to join the instances with the plane. Let's connect both the instances and the plane to the inputs of the join geometry and let's get uh, the collection we want collection info and let's add the trees here so we can use these trees on the plane we have to press separate children and reset children and let's change the distribute points on faces to Poisson disk and this allows us to have a minimum distance between each instance Let's now randomize the values for the scale. So we're gonna add a random value So each tree has its own value. They're not the same value. We're gonna add a maximum and a minimum value. Well, let me change this from vector to floats. Okay, so now we can adjust the minimum and maximum values. Okay, and we're gonna do this for the rotation too, but we're gonna use a vector as we want only the Z axis to be uh, random. So let's connect it to the vector. And let's set the X and Y to zeros so we can only change the Zs. So I'm gonna enable pick instance, which enables us to pick one of the instances in the collection. And let's pump up the distribution a bit. So I wanna take the density as uh, input from the properties tab. So I'm gonna connect it to the input panel. So I'm also gonna connect that density factor to the input. So I can, uh, instead of just having random trees, I can input a weight density map where the trees can be set. And make sure to change the type to float. So we go to the properties area and we're gonna press on the little box on the sides. So let's head to the weight paint tab. I'm gonna paint where I want my trees, where red indicates uh, where their density is the highest and blue is the lowest. 
let's now select the paint group that we just painted and now as you can see the trees are added on the areas where we have painted reds let's now organize everything we're gonna add these nodes i just selected into a frame let's add a frame frame okay let's select these nodes and add them in the frame let's now rename it to trees so these will be the set of tree uh, set of nodes for the trees now let's copy this set of nodes and recreate them for the plants and for the grass but let's start with the plants first let's change the collection to plants and input the instance into the join geometry and let's also connect the input for the instance on the distribute on faces let's decrease the size a bit and let's decrease the distance between each plant so they can be distributed okay, now we have our plants and trees on the plane let's add a separate weight distribution map for the plants so we're gonna do that by connecting the density max to the input which is gonna control the density of the plants this time and we're also gonna connect the density factor which is gonna have a weight distribution map on it which is gonna also tell us where we want the plants now let's go to the properties tab and select the little box and we're gonna add a weight distribution map Let's go into the weight, uh, weight paints, and let's add a new, let's add a new weight map called plants. And let's paint over to choose where we want the plants. I ideally want them in the middle of the scene, around here, yeah, as that's where they're gonna be visible most of the time. I'm now gonna head to the asset browser and grab a material for the grounds. Now heading to the geometry nodes section, we're gonna repeat this whole process for the grass. Now we're gonna add the camera for the scene. We're gonna reposition it where we want using the walk navigation. Let's now head to rendered view so we can see how everything is looking. Let's go to cycles and see GPU. Okay, so let's add a background sky texture, which is gonna just add some natural lights to the scene. Let's adjust the sun elevation so it's not as bright as it is. And we'll play with the other values till we get the desired look we're going for. So what I did was just reposition some trees and added some trees near the camera so it covers up the sides. Okay, hopping on into rendered view looks pretty good now. So let's add the cave we're gonna have the camera in. Let's add a cube and let's reposition this cube to be the right size so I can just move it up okay, and let's delete the front and bottom faces and we're gonna subdivide the cube make sure that you bevel the front edges so it doesn't get slanted like this Now I know this doesn't look the best, but with some textures and uh, a bit of rocks, we could make this look good. Let's add a texture to it. So we're gonna add some random rocks inside the cave, which is gonna cover the tiles for the material, as it's a bit repetitive. Looking at the camera, I'll just decrease the focal length a bit to make the scene wider. And I'm gonna head to the asset browser and I'm gonna grab some rocks. Let's grab.
grab the one on the yeah this one so this rock has a lot of grass and mossiness around it which is gonna look good in the finer render now let's isolate the big rocks without the small little ones i'm gonna use a select tool here the lasso select tool we're gonna select over them carefully until we have the desired rocks now that we have our rock let's place them in the cave and we'll just place them around so they cover the whole thing doesn't really matter how the scene looks like outside the render we just care about how it looks like in the meantime while rendering so let's just increase the size of the rocks a bit and uh, let's just keep moving them until they cover most of the camera sides now let's view the render oh looks amazing we are just gonna need some lights inside the cave so the the rocks are a little bit visible so you could just add a normal light area but i have an add-on for gobos which are just light textures they just add a little bit more detail you don't need them that much but they're gonna look just nice here let's rotate them a bit and reposition them this looks just fine Ooh. okay we'll keep adjusting till we find yeah this position looks just nice it reflects on the rocks and adds some details nice yeah so let's change the color of the light so it matches the same color of the sun's light let's also just add more lights in the cave so everything is visible to some degree now i'm gonna just adjust the rocks a bit and render the scene let's hop in the compositing tab and let's open the uv editor so we can view our render results uv editor, render results okay and let's add a glare node so it um, just adds some sparks so fog glow Ooh, this looks nice so i'm just gonna play with the values here till i get the look i'm going for add a hue saturation node just to add more color to the scene so we're gonna play with the saturation till we get the color we're looking for in the picture okay we're done with this part hope you enjoyed and in the next part we will be discussing more about the scene where the product is present and the environment around it and here is the render.